In the next set of videos, we're going to look at creating, updating and deleting data using Django REST framework. And we're going to look at how to do that using the generic views that are built into the package. Now, if we look at the documentation here, we've looked at a couple of these generic view classes at the moment. We've looked at the list and the retrieve API view. And that is for getting a list of different entities and returning them as JSON data. And with the retrieve API view, that's for retrieving a single object from the database and returning that object as JSON. Now we have other concrete views here, such as the create API view that we're going to look at in this video. And this view allows us to create entities in our database and it provides a post method handler. So the difference between the list and the retrieve APIs, which used the get handler, is that this one is going to use a post handler. It's going to correspond to a post request under the hood. And when that post request comes in, we're going to see how we can use that to actually create new data in the database. Now, just to reiterate, all of the views that we've got so far with the API view that has a get method, as well as the list API view and the retrieve API view, these are all taking get requests and they're returning data, but they're not actually mutating anything on the server or the database. Now, the HTTP protocol itself has different request types. For example, a post request is typically sent if you want to actually create new data in the database and put requests and patch requests are sent to update existing data. And finally, you can also have delete requests and these are responsible for actually removing data from your database or whatever environment your data is stored in. So we can use these HTTP methods in order to change data that we have in our database for our business or our application or whatever we've got. And we're going to explore all of this in upcoming videos. Now let's start with creating data. So if we go back to here, it's the create API view that we want to actually use here. And this works very similarly to the other views that we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the product list API view and I'm going to copy that. And let's paste that into the editor below that view here. And we're going to change the name of this. So instead of list, I'm going to use product create API view. And I'm going to change what's inherited here. So it's not going to be the list API view, but it's going to be a different class from the generics module. And that's the create API view. Now the create API view will expect a query set as well, or you can tie that to a model class. That might make more sense. So we can attach a model here of product. And that's the model that we ultimately want to create and store in the database when a post request comes into this create API view. Now the serializer class, we can actually reuse the product serializer here. So if we go to serializers.py, what we can see here is that the product serializer at the moment is returning an ID, a name, a price and the number in stock. Now we're going to need to change this slightly. So if I go to models.py and we look at the product model, what we are going to have to have in a post request in order to create a new product is the name of the product and the description. We will also need the price of the product and the number in stock. And the reason that we need all of these is because none of them are nullable values. Although I suppose because these are car fields, we could represent these as null using an empty string. But what we're going to do is we're going to require all of these. And of course, we don't need the ID because if you send a post request with an ID, that's not going to be what we want. What we want is for the database to actually generate that ID when we store the new product in the product table. So I'm going to replace the ID with the description here. And of course, that's also going to affect the get endpoints. So if we go back to views.py, we have the product list API view. That's returning all of the products. If we go to that view now on the browser, you can see that we get back a single product here and it contains the description, the name, the price and the stock. Now I'm going to make one key change here. We changed this earlier in the series. We were excluding items where the stock is greater than zero. I'm going to change this and we're just going to bring that back to getting all of the products. So product.objects.all. And that's going to ensure that when we go back to this page and refresh, we get back all of the products. So you can see all of them in this response. Now you might be asking, what if you need the ID in the response? You cannot have the ID in the serializer if you're sending a post request because the ID is generated by the database. So in that case, what you could do is create a dedicated serializer for the get requests and a second product serializer for the data you expect in the post request if it's going to be different. Now, one thing I want to just note as well before we test this out is that these are very similar views, as you can see here, but we can actually consolidate these using something called view sets and also with different generic view types. We're going to see that later in this video and for the view sets, we're going to see that in future videos as well. So that's enough from me about these classes. What we're going to do now is create a URL in the Django application and that URL is going to send the request on to the product create API view. So let's go to urls.py and normally if you want to create a new product, 
you would send a post request to the product's endpoint. At the moment, this product list API view is only going to accept a GET request, but as I said, we're going to consolidate this later in this video so that all the requests, whether it's a GET or a POST request, are going to be sent to the product's endpoint and they're going to be handled appropriately. So let's copy this URL down to the line below for now and I'm just going to create a temporary URL here, products slash create and we're going to change the view here to the product create API view. Now we want to test sending a POST request to this URL so what we're going to do is navigate to the browsable API and slash products is what we have at the moment. We're going to add slash create to that and you can see what we get back here. We get back a detail telling us that a GET request which we've just sent is not allowed at this endpoint. This is an endpoint that only accepts a POST request. Now we can send a POST request using this HTML form at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just add some dummy data here. So I've added that data here and now we can send the POST request to that endpoint. And you can see we get back a 201 created response here. Now HTTP 201 created indicates that on the server a new resource has been created. So it's returning that response code and you can see the new data here for our object, the new product that's been created. Now has that been stored in the database? Let's go back to slash products and you can see if we go to the very bottom here, that dummy data that I added is now present in the response on the list page. And that means that the data has been stored successfully in the database on that post request. So that post request was sent to this URL and that forwards it on to the product create API view that we just created. And just with these three lines of code, we can then store that new data in the database. And we're reusing that product serializer as we've used it in many other views in this application. So we're now able to add new products into our database over the API. That could be very useful for our applications. But as I said a minute ago, we want to conform to REST conventions. So we want a GET and a POST request to be able to be sent to the slash products endpoint. We don't want to have to create a dedicated endpoint here to create a new product. We just want to send a POST request to the same one as we can send a GET request to in order to actually get the list of products. So how do we actually do that? What we're going to do is introduce another generic view. So let me go back to the documentation. Now if we look at the concrete view classes, we've used the create API view and the list API view. But in a REST API, you often want to get the list and create a new entity at the same URL. So REST framework provides some different concrete views for this purpose. And one of them is the list create API view. So if you need an endpoint that not only lists, but also allows you to create new entities using a POST request, you can use this one here. This is used for read write endpoints to represent a collection of model instances, and it provides that get and the POST method handler. Now in order to do this, it not only extends generic API view, but it adds these two mixins. One is the list model mixin, and the second one is the create model mixin. And that gives the view the ability to actually list the products as well as create new products in the database. That's provided by these mixins. Now I want to look slightly into the actual internals of this list API create view and indeed the create API view itself before we move on. So what I'm going to do is load up a new website just now and I'll leave a link to this website in the description. It's called Classy Django REST Framework. And this is an excellent resource for class-based views in Django REST Framework. And what we're going to look at at the moment is the generic class, the create API view class. Now what this website is going to show you is that for all of these different generic views, the different attributes that you can actually add to the view, as well as the different methods you can override in order to perform some customization on those views. Now one of the methods that we have here is the create method. And we can actually override this to perform custom logic on the post request that's sent into this view. So if we look at what's here by default, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. What happens when the create method is called is we get the serializer by calling self.getSerializer and that's another method on generic views in Django REST framework. That gives you back the serializer class and you're passing the data from the post request in there. And remember that when you're actually sending a post request, request.data is going to contain the actual data that's been posted by the client and that's the data that they want to use in order to create a new entity on the back end. So that data is available on the Django REST framework request object on the dot data property. So we're passing that into the serializer and then because we're actually passing client data into the serializer, we need to validate that and make sure that it is valid before we actually add that to the database. Now we can do that by calling an isValid function on the serializer object. 
And if that doesn't raise an exception, we then call perform create. And that's actually going to perform the creation of the object in the database. And you can see some other lines of code here to get the success headers for the response. And then we return a REST framework response object with the new data that's been created. And we're attaching that status of HTTP 201 created. Now let's see an example of this when we send that post request. I'm going to go back to views.py and we have the create API view here. What we can do is override that and we need to do that in lowercase. So if we override create, we can look at this website here and we can copy the signature for the create function. And I'm going to pass that in here. And all I want to do here is just print request.data for now. So if we print request.data, what we can then do is just return the call to create on the super class. So super.create, and we can pass through these arguments that have been passed into this function to the super classes create method. And remember the super class here is the create API view. So all we're doing is overriding this in order to print the data to the terminal. And then we're just telling the super class to continue as it would normally. And what that's going to do is it's going to call this method here on the super class and run all of those lines of code to serialize the incoming data, save it to the database and then return the appropriate response. So let's test this out. Let's go back to our API here and to the create endpoint. I'm going to create another product with the exact same data here. So let's post that and we get back the response. If we go to the terminal here, I'm going to expand this so we can see it better. But what we printed out here is a query dictionary containing the posted data. So for example, we can see the description and the name, the price and the stock number. And that's all coming in on request.data. And that data property is added by Django REST Framework's API view. And it represents the data that's been posted in this case to the back end. Now, if you're using the normal Django views, you might be used to doing it this way. For example, request.post.get, and then you would get the name from that. But REST Framework's request object basically handles that for you and adds all of the data to this dot data attribute. Now, what I want to do is go back to classy Django REST Framework, and we're going to go back here to the generics, and we're going to look at the list API view as well. So that doesn't have a create method because it's not actually creating anything in the database. But if we look down here, it has a method called list. Now let's expand this and we're going to see a bit about the logic that's performed here. So what happens here is that we get a query set and we get that by calling filter query set and get query set. So self.get query set is going to get the base query set for the list view. And then we're going to filter that using another internal function called filter query set. And at any stage, you can override these functions in your views if you want to perform some custom filtering or custom logic when you're actually getting the base query set. And then we optionally paginate the query set if we've got pagination turned on. And we're going to look at pagination later in the series. And if we have pagination, we use self.get serializer and we pass the page of data to that and then return a paginated response. Otherwise, what we do is we just call get serializer and pass the entire query set into that and return a response containing all of that data after it's been serialized from a Django query set to JSON data. Now, these are actually action methods that are added to the list and create API views. So the list API view has a list method. It's an action method. And the create API view has the create method. Now, these are added by the mixins. So let's go back to the documentation. And if we look at the list model mixin, what this is doing is it's providing that list method and that implements listing out a query set as an API response. And just below that, we have the section for the create model mixin. That provides the create method and that implements creating and saving a new model instance to the database. So the point that I want to take away here is that you have these concrete view classes here, and then you have mixins that can augment those classes with the functionality that's required. And that's reusable, so you can actually reuse these mixins in different places throughout your application. Now, the reason I want to mention all of this one more time, if we go back to classy Django REST framework, if we go to the list create API view, you can see the ancestors of that. It includes the list model mixin and the create model mixin. So these mixins are adding both a list and a create method to the view class. So if we go down to the methods on the class, you can see we have the create method and we can scroll further down here and we can see the list method as well. And what this means is that this class can accept both a get and a post request. And that's exactly what we want here in order to consolidate the listing of products and the creation of products into a single URL. So let's do that just now. After all of that talking from me, I hope that made sense. What we're going to do now is create a single view. 
and I'm going to do this at the top here. So instead of product list API view, we're going to call this product list create API view. And we're going to change the generic that we are extending here. So it's going to be list create API view now. And we can just keep the same properties on that class. So we're providing a query set of all of the products. That's for the list view. And we're also providing the serializer class for serialization and deserialization. Now that we're also creating products. So I'm going to remove this view that we have below here and we can get rid of that from the urls.py file as well. So let's save this and go back to urls.py. We're going to remove this products create endpoint and we're going to change what's referenced here in the slash products endpoint to this view here. So let me copy paste that in here. And now when we send a get or a post request to slash products, it's going to be handled appropriately by this view. And you can see we get all of that behavior out of the box with three lines of code. So that's pretty amazing and that's some of the benefits of using REST framework when you have these API endpoints that are closely attached to model instances in your application. So we need to test this out now and make sure that it's working. So let's go back to our API and we're going to go to slash products now and we're going to refresh the page. Now you can see we get the response containing the list of products. So that's still working okay. But notice if we go to the bottom here, we now have a form that allows us to send a post request as well to the same URL. So I'm going to fill this with random data again. So I've added this random data and we're going to click the post button and that's going to send that post request. And again, we're getting back 201 created along with the JSON representation of that new resource. And if we go back to the get request to slash products and we go to the bottom of this page, you can see we now have product two also appearing in this output. So that's been saved to the database. And now we have a single endpoint for getting a list of products and also for creating a new product in the database. And both of those requests are now handled by the same view and that's that view that extends the list create API view from REST Framework's generics module. So this can help reduce the size of the code base because we can consolidate this logic in a single view class. Now there's a bit of magic going on here and some people like that and some people don't. But in my opinion, if you can learn Django REST Framework well, this kind of magic can really make you much more productive as a developer when you're actually creating APIs. But of course, in order to do that, sometimes you have to learn quite a bit about the internals of some of these methods or some of these classes when you actually need to perform custom logic and extend some of these methods. We'll cover a bit more about that later in this series, but that's going to be all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, we've got this coffee page and any donations are greatly appreciated. Thanks very much to everyone who's donated so far. It's really helping keep this content free on YouTube. And if you have any suggestions for the next videos, if you've got any content you want to see, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.